everybody. Terry Measley here with Scale Model Podcast. I uh, saw some ads a few weeks ago on um, de from Decno Models, and they're advertising 3D printed kits of some great subjects. Um, they also do little um, resin kits, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to do an inbox look at it from uh, professional and personal curiosity. I want to know how these kits uh, how these kits look, especially the 3D printed ones. But Let's start with a little Cessna CR3. I usually don't do 70 second scale kits, but uh, I love these little racers and this one might be kind of fun. So let's have a look. We know it's a tiny plane. <laughs> this is really tiny. I do love the way um, impulse sealers and bags are used for packaging these sort of kits. Um, it keeps everything separate. They become their own um, packaging, uh, padding and such. The decals are also very, very snugly packaged into a little uh, bit of plastic film here. Um, they look nice. I don't see... Uh, looks like Digital Silk is the company that did that. So if these are silk screen decals, they're going to be very nice to use. Um, anytime I use decals like this, I usually coat the whole thing with liquid decal film, just to be sure. Um, I don't know that there are any sacrificial decals here, maybe the little logo. I could play around with that first. And, instructions. Shouldn't take a lot of instructions for a kit like this, but you've got to do something. There you go. It doesn't... Nothing too surprising there. Um, gives you a little bit of uh, coloring and some uh, other information and a little bit of uh, history on the uh, Chicago Air Races and the uh, Johnny Livingston's plane here. It, it, it is tiny. I know I looked it up online. It has a 18 foot wingspan. So we'll look at it here. Or roughly 18 feet and it's there it is it's just a shade over three scale inches here so it's probably right bang on that is super tiny <laughs> I love it so it you have to be careful cleaning it up there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of extras here from some mold flash but it actually looks really nice the detail on the um, on the stringers here on the fuselage will take some work. Um, I'm not sure if that little notch there is supposed to be there. I'll find out later. If not, it'll be easy enough to fix. Very slim, slender um, surfaces here, down almost to a razor's edge on the on the wing. So that's all very good. I'm not actually sure where they cast that, where the mold lines went up top so the it was poured down to the bottom that's a very way, smart way to do it they give you two thermo uh, thermoformed um, windscreens that's nice and all the other goodies so there we go little Decna model CR3 race plane uh, I like it I think they, it's a good execution it shouldn't be too much Famous last words, it will be fun painting yellow over blue. It'll need a decent primer. <laughs> Second one, this is the one that really caught my interest, the Spartan 7W. Um, this does come in civilian and military colors. I like these liaison aircraft. I, it does come all sealed up. I did cut that a moment ago. Let's have a look here. I should say, and it looks like I set it aside somewhere unless I put it in the box. Um, the box shipped with a little thank you note and uh, an additional 5% off that could be used in conjunction with any of their other sales. So that's a nice touch. There we go. Decals look nice. They look like they are 
real decals, not just laser printed, so you, I can actually see the decal film over them. So these are a little bit different from the um, the ones for the Cessna. Instructions look good. Pretty detailed. Very nice. Sub assemblies. Very nice. I think that's a full scale. I think that's a full scale pattern. Yeah, that's a full scale pattern. I, I've said this before. I love having a full scale pattern um, on your artwork. It makes it so much easier to really position everything and and uh, get a feel for how how it's going to work out. So at least that, not so much on this. Very good though. I like it. These liaison and transport aircraft, all these civilian model uh, aircraft that were used uh, in various wars, are, are, are fascinating to me uh, because some of these were hot rods, and this this was this was a nice, uh, almost the, the um, Cessna Citation of its day. If the stagger wing was the the Learjet being fast and and light, this uh, this is more of a Citation. Okay, so let's have a look. I can find a knife or a pair of scissors, open it up. These are direct 3D prints. And you can see, just you probably can't see on the video. Maybe you can if, I, if the light plays with it right. A little bit of the grow lines. It is suitably thin with enough um, strengthening support in here to really give you a hand. That'll take just a very fine buff or maybe one of the primers that are developed for these sort of products would work pretty well. You can feel the ribbing on it. You can't feel it so much there, but where that curve comes under, you can feel it. I don't think it will take much cleanup whatsoever on this. There's a little bit of uh, support artifacts on the inside here. Uh, so it was grown. So all those those support no knobs, you can see the little support knobs in there. Um, those are all on the inside. So that's very smart. This is all um, padding in here, insulation, uh, because it was a little bit of uh, weatherproofing and, and soundproofing on these planes. Have a look at the wing here. So there is a bit of a patterning to it. You can see how it it plays with the light there. There's a bit of a patterning to the raised effect. Um, I will have to do some digging to see if that, if those are part of the wing, if it's got cross members through it, like this, stringers. Uh, if not, then it will have to be polished out. It's on both sides, so my guess is it's throughout the whole thing. So my guess is it's an artifact that will have to be cleaned up. Aileron controls look nice. Everything looks looks just gorgeous. See how this fits in here. There's a couple little tight spots. Test fitting will tell you where those are, but it looks like it should glue down extremely well and at the right angle. And that's what is, is important here. It's kind of tough to do that. Ah, yeah, there's some grow lines here that will have to be taken care of and then it'll fit better. Very pretty. I think it'll it'll be a nice build. Let's look at the more of the bits here. Got the engine mount. That's designed to fit in the, the square uh, the square recess here, so it should fit very nicely. Looks like it's got inlets for exhausts and such. 
That's nice. What's inside here? Got the spinner floating around inside the cowl. The engine looks pretty good. Push rods are there. Um, I think that cowl is a fairly tight cowl. So you may not see a huge amount of the engine in there. Well, let's open it up. So it's all got blocks. That'll, that, the grow lines were on this, so that'll have to, oh, it's keyed. There we go. Um, but it'll have to be cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, it sits back in there. Um, yeah, so I think it, it's sufficient. The engine does have the exhaust collector back here, which is pretty nice, but you're not going to see it. It doesn't have cowl flaps to open up. It's just a passive, uh, passive gap, so it's always open. But very cool. There are more detailed engines on the market if you want, but I think with good painting and if you add in some of your uh, ignition wires, that'd look fantastic. Interior bits. One of the wheels already popped off, but since it's all sealed up in a little plastic envelope, that looks nice. Those gear door are essentially transparent. They're so thin. I don't know if they used a different resin for the landing gear. Uh, the struts uh, seem a little flexible, but maybe it's it's fine because this shouldn't be that heavy. Although these wings are pretty are solid, I don't see any drainage spots for them, so they're, they're printed solid. Got your couch for the passengers. Got a nice door. Got your your lazy boys here for the uh, the pilot and, and co-pilot or passenger. You'll have to do your own research, I guess, to see if there were any lap belts. I presume there would be lap belts, but you never know. There we go. Instrument panel is essentially blank. There's a couple of sub panels here that you would put the, um, the decals on. So it's up to you whether you want to try to do anything more than that. I think at the angles and the type of, of um, instrument panel this is, I don't know that you're going to see a huge amount of that that instrument panel, so I probably won't bother for, to do it. So more for the more mating surfaces here to deal with. They look pretty good though. I, I presume when we clean up some of the printing artifacts, they'll they'll tighten up even more. That looks pretty nice. By the time this sits in here, it's the office is getting pretty crowded. Pretty nice though. Separate control surfaces. Uh, well, separate rudder, but not not elevators. It's a nice deep panel line though, so maybe if you wanted to pose them down, that would be good. If the real plane uh, did droop may not have and we have 3d printed I mean they resin cast um, at least I think they're resin cast let's have a look clear bits I'm generally not a huge fan of, of resin cast clear bits these are really thin though in this style of, of aircraft you don't have to do any masking on on the um, on the windows themselves, so these these might work fine.
in the windscreens. They're a little opaque. Um, I'll polish them up, see what they are, and if nothing else, then I guess thermoform replacements for them. But I, I presume Decno wouldn't have done this unless they were pretty confident in it. As I said, they are quite thin. A lot of times you find the resin class clear bits are, are pretty thick, but these are really nice. Okay. Last bag here is the prop and some exhausts. And those exhausts look fairly straight, maybe a tiny bit of curve to them, so I may replace those with some some tube. See how it turns out. They are there is a nice little um, depression in them, so maybe just a little bit of paint would do the job. Prop looks nice. It's a fixed prop. It's interesting. Or wait. It won't matter because there's a spinner on it anyway. It could, it's probably a variable pitch, I would presume. It's a fast plane. So there we go. A nice little um, addition. I, I like this a lot. I'm going to keep an eye on Decno. Um, these, are, these are underserved subjects, severely underserved subjects. You're starting to see some more interest in them from companies like Dora Wings and, and Decno's fitting right in with them. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, well, I just noticed this. I have not reviewed the instructions to see what order they suggest you do these things in, but there is a positive lock here on the wings. So I probably will reinforce that with some pins. But that's the wingspan on it. It's a pretty good sized aircraft, as you might expect for a little a small transport. Yeah, there we go. Get to it, guys. Uh, I, I got to put this back in the box because I'm not going to start this anytime soon. I got some other things going on, but it's probably going to keep calling at me from the sideline. Oh, wow, that almost goes all the way through. The mounting point for the landing gear here goes almost all the way through. You can see. Yeah, maybe you can't see too well. You can probably see it that way a little better. Anyway, it, it's a very thin surface at the wheel wells, which was probably true on the real plane, but right through that strut there. It'll work. Fix it in there with some resin, and uh, it'll be good. There's some epoxy. There's the spinner. All right, guys, have at it. Techno models. I like it. Again, for our Scale Model Podcast, I'm Terry Measley. Um, have fun, guys. Build something.